Hello, make sure you subscribe so you never miss an episode. You rate and review my podcast if you like me. And you can follow me on Instagram. It's Yes King Oliver. Tati bye. <laughs> So um, I had a McDonald's off Justy a moment a few hours ago, and um, I feel like, I feel like shit, right? And so what yeah. I realised is that if you take McDonald's and what they put in it, for example, the beef and the bread, the salad and the tomato, it's healthy. Having a McDonald's is more healthy than say going to a supermarket and getting a sandwich because it literally is just if you watch it online how it's made, minced beef, like off cuts mm-hmm. of beef, whatever, um, the lettuce, the bread, and the tomato. The only thing they add is salt. But the reason why I feel shit is because there's so much salt in that you get so dehydrated, not to mention mm-hmm. all the salt on the chips, that after you've had it, the amount of salt is just like so much. If you were to do it in terms of right. grams, that you'd have it throughout the day of that amount of grams, but you just have it in one go. And and I just feel like shit, honestly. Yeah, I'm sure very dehydrating. Yeah, literally, it's just just my mouth's dry and I'm drinking loads of water and yeah. it just reminds me why I stopped eating such a, a bad food in the first place because I used to just have so much crap I feel shit all the time and it just totally I like to go back and it's to- like the less you eat it and when you finally do you realize just how like it affects your body that's like me with sugar like I'm such a sweet tooth but I just, and I try to, you know, do relatively like healthy alternatives, but like once in a while, if I have like a piece of cake or like a donut or something, I feel like, you know, not only is it physical, but it's such a depressant, you know, like same as like alcohol, it like kind of just dampers your mood a bit as well. and makes you all brain foggy. Yeah, I said to my mum, "Do you uh, are you thirsty?" She's like, "A bit. I feel a bit sluggish." And I'm like, yeah. "It's so incredible, like how salt is in everything, and yet it's the it's the thing that makes us feel the worst." And I think about how people just have salt here and there, like salt and pepper on their food every day, you know, salt in crisps, salt in sandwiches, whatever. All this salt adds up, and salt is just rock. So it's like, at what point did man or even animal decide that? I mean, you could say sodium, but in terms of rock salt what point did we realize we need rock in our body um because yeah. the end of the day it does damage our, our arteries it does damage us you could say sodium is different and it gives us fuel that's what goats walk the to the minerals. top of the walk to the top of the mountain they lick off literally like the minerals at the top but in terms of like salt we don't need it but imagine how shit i felt and how shit people feel consistently all the time that they didn't realize what it feels like to not have salt and sugar in their diet and i've i don't have like i rarely have a glass of orange juice because mm-hmm. even then it's so strong in sugar even though it's not like coke that i just prefer water i just feel so good on water that having a glass oh, of wait. orange juice i just rarely ever have it anymore it's just it's i just live off teas and water literally yeah yeah, me too. Or fresh pressed juices. Like I do like, you know, freshly pressed orange juice. But yeah, even then it just feels like kind of like a sugar overload sometimes. But it is crazy how like sugar and salt are literally in everything these days. It's like, like what you were saying, at what point did mankind decide that we needed to like overload everything? And like, yeah, maybe it's like to sell more of the product and make it taste better you know but it's like okay well when we first started doing it did it really taste good to people you know because like if we're not really used to it we have it kind of tastes like whoa like there was something like kind of up with this you know or it makes me feel like crap so at what point did we become so like addicted to it that it's just like the norm you know it's it's like man's around a campfire they've just caught a wild pig right and they're chopping it up it's like spinning and cooking and then suddenly somebody says it passed that rock and it's like rubs yeah. two rocks together <laughs> right. and like all the rock just goes yeah. in our food. It's like, at what point? It's like, think about it. If you drop something How did on they the... discover that? Yeah. If you, if you drop That's something so on weird. the floor, the first thing you do is you blow it off or you don't eat it. But on the floor, it's just the same type of thing. Mud, dust, rock, minerals anyway. But yet you actually physically grind rocks into your food and eat it. So that's that's a mind thing. But it's almost like it takes over, it overloads your senses that you don't realize how shitty or tasty the food is without because even chicken nuggets it's blended chicken and batter so gross. and i believe that the only reason why people 
eat it it's because of the tomato ketchup think about it you never have a nugget you might right, not be, without <laughs> yeah. without the tomato sauce and it's like i try eating a nugget it's without tomato sauce it's just fucking disgusting like it's just yeah. boring it's like you might as well just yeah. get a bit of chicken Very fillet buoyant. from the fridge and cook it and eat it mm-hmm. so it's the salt again and the sugar in the tomato sauce exactly and that seriously makes me want to throw up just thinking about chicken nuggets i'm actually a vegetarian and i've been that way for like a while i've gone back to like eating meat and fish before just to kind of see how i do and i definitely just prefer vegetarianism but after just doing my research of like you know what goes into these highly processed meats and all of that i'm just like so disgusted with it and that's the thing you see is that people would be like for example you say you're a vegetarian or vegan right and then you suddenly have meat they'll be like oh i thought you were vegan vegetarian obviously you lied i know obviously you oh weren't. my god yeah that it's like listen thing. listen mate i'm living my life i'm doing what the fuck i want to do if i want to have right. sex with a guy tonight i'll do it if i want to have sex with a girl exactly. tomorrow i'll do it i thought you were gay i was gay that was yesterday now tomorrow right. another day. and like we oh. should have the freedom to explore with like what works best for us just because like you claim yourself as a vegan and you live even most days of your life as a vegan but you have meat like once a week or once a month you can still be a vegan because majority of the time you are vegan, but people are like, oh, well, it's the ethical side of it. You're still making a difference just by cutting it out one meal a day or one day a week or whatever it is. I hate the whole like stigma of like so black and white when it's like everything these days, it's a spectrum, no matter what it is. You know, there's always an exception. There's always a spectrum. There's just no like, point blank you know and I feel like a lot of people are starting to kind of move away from that mindset because I feel like that was very generational you know it's like people who say have been you know uh they've been straight the whole life and then they have a family have kids whatever and they're 50 and he comes out as gay I'm like do you understand what you just said you fancy women still but you've said you're gay why can't you just like both? Why have you got to be one or the right. other? You're not fucking totally. gay. Totally. Because you've been shagging women your whole life. You've got a wife. What, you just suddenly don't find women attractive? Of course. <laughs> yeah. What does the gay mean? What that means is you are not giving you any sex and you want to have some cock because you never did it when you were a youngster because of society and pressures and norms. And you kept that being your bonnet. You never got it right. out. And you're feeling, fuck mm-hmm. the world. I'm just going to do what I want to do. And all the things right. you need, like a piercing, so a tattoo, going to one other sucking extreme. a cock, you just do it all at once. And it's like, it's label again. <laughs> Right. And I totally believe that like that in itself is such a spectrum as well. And I think that's why people in general go from one extreme to the other because they have been like, like, you know, suppressing themselves and not allowing themselves to have anything of whatever they're truly desiring. So when they finally have that freedom, they're just like, okay, you know, like time to just really go for it. And, you know, maybe they need to do that in order to find that balance. But I think if we from like day one really emphasize just be authentic. You know what I mean? Whatever that means, you don't even have to label it. Just like be yourself and let yourself just be right where you are, no matter what it is, even if you're still figuring it out, that is okay. You know, just be real. Yeah, And it's the same as transgenders, right? I don't personally believe that you're born in the wrong body. There's male and female positive, negative, sperm, egg. There's always two, right? It's a stereotype of how a guy should be doing this and doing certain things like playing football, fighting, arguing, holding your emotions in. And women should be having a chat, doing makeup, talking and laughing on a high pitch frequency. And so you look at these stereotypes and you're like, well, that's not me. I'm not doing Barbies and doing makeup. So therefore I must be the Mm -hmm. opposite. So I chop my dick off and, you know, make make myself got some boobs. And so it's like... I, I understand all of it. And it all comes down to, again, this pressure of having to choose between like Republican, Democrat, black or white, mm-hmm. gay, straight, marriage, no marriage, mon- monogamous or, you know, cheating. It's like fucking hell. There is just, there's, there's just so much in between that people right. should be chopping off their cock, period. Obviously, how do you explain all this to people who just want a way out? And the answer is you simply cannot. It's just evolution and just do what you got to do. But it's crazy when... You see all this, even like, you know, people wanting a boob job at like like 14 because their boobs aren't very big. I'm like, Christ, your tits are still going to be growing until you're 25. Give it a chance. Yeah, give and, it a chance, right? And yeah. it's like people are choosing between one or the other. And it's like there is no such thing as one or the other. 
Right. And it's scary. Yeah, it's all what I think should whatever makes you feel good about yourself and like that idea can be very twisted in our society because it's like, okay, well, I need all this plastic surgery. I need to do all of these things to make myself feel good. And like, sure, but that is kind of like sad. You know, it's like, there's obviously a lot of inner work that needs to be done. And we kind of just use whatever we can to numb ourselves or to hide it or suppress it and not really get to the root of it. And a lot of it kind of comes down to like, just that corruption of like masculine and feminine energy. Like, you know, it's, we're either like highly feminine, like I have to be feminine or I am not a woman, you know, when it's like, no, like being masculine doesn't necessarily mean that I'm a man, you know, it's just energy and like letting yourself be fluid between the two because we all have it, you know, within us. And to be like fully like nourished within yourself, you need that healthy balance of the two because, like they both want to come forth in different times of your life or periods or day to day, you know, moment to moment, just letting them blend together. You know, what's crazy is that, you know, our father is masculine, our mother is feminine. So each person, boy or girl, will have both masculine and feminine. And yet man is just trying to enforce the more masculine and hide the feminine because it's weakness or whatever. And, you mm -hmm. know, women are more feminine and masculine, but it's just it's it's complete mixture of both. And the problems are when you basically say, oh, no, that doesn't exist. Um, it's not supposed to be there. And it is supposed to be there. And, you know, the stereotype of men not showing emotion and women always talking about emotions. It's like this is all man made up nonsense. You can do whatever you want. You can. Exactly. Hide, it's hide your yourself. life. Oh, and yeah. men can chat down the pub to a bloke who wants to listen to the nonsense. There's plenty of guys out there who'd happily listen to a man's nonsense, just like there is plenty of women who listen to women's nonsense. It's like there's no stereotype. Do what the fuck you want to do. If you want to. Um, hang with the lion go hang with the lion if you want to hang with the squirrel go with the squirrel so like, oh, I yeah. you like lions <laughs> I did that was yesterday now I'm hanging with the squirrels exactly so I think it's important to realize that it's your life and there's really there's no rules you know like maybe there are like social rules as far as like do no harm you know what I mean <laughs> or like you could even call it like spiritual rules you know something that just like everyone should abide by to like create the most peace on this earth but even that is not really being respected. And I think it comes down to because we're not respecting ourselves. We're putting ourselves in these categories and we're living by these like social conditioning rules that are telling us that we have to do this and this in order to be successful or we have to do this and this and then we will be happy when we know like internally that's not actually going to bring me happiness because that's not what I truly want to do maybe it is like maybe you know as a man like you feel the need to provide for your family like yeah provide for your family that will make you feel fulfilled but working this like corporate job where you're literally working like 40 plus hours a week and you never get a be with your family is that going to make you happy so you have this family you're providing for but you never get to see them you know so what's like what's really the point in that it's the same as um, having a, a mortgage, right, based on the amount you make per year. So you have to work even harder all day, every day to pay for this big house that your family live in that you literally see at seven o'clock at night for yeah. three hours. And then you go to <laughs> right. bed at nine and then you get up at six. And it's like the only time you see your gardens on the weekend because it's dark when you get in and dark when you wake up. So like all this space that you've just bought, it's like. I'd rather live in a, in a, in a tent or, or, or a bus, a motorhome, right? Where there's mm -hmm. no debt, so I don't have to ever work. Like, we only work to pay off our bills. If you've got no bills, right. you don't need to work. If you want a massage, mm -hmm. yeah, you could trade with somebody else, cut their grass, they can give you a massage. Or, you know, make money for the cash, the same as, same as food. And I'm, I've actually started to grow in my airing cupboard, getting ready for the summer. Lemon, avocado, uh, olive, garlic, ginger, wow. jalapeno, pepper... I haven't planted these ones yet, but I'm going to do tomato, leek. Um, there was someone else I did. Oh, yeah, so <laughs> I'm getting potatoes ready to grow and carrots, right? Because all you do is Sweet. chop off the carrot. The lettuce, once you've got the lettuce and you've uh, used the leaves, just cut the bottom of it, put that in water, mm -hmm. and it will grow through the middle. And I YouTubed it, how to grow lettuce and also mushrooms. Literally, you put the, chop the stalk off, put it on a piece of paper, 
put some paws or something on the paper and then you chop that paper put it in some like dark mud in a massive say tub and it, it just grows and all these mushrooms start to grow and i can't wait so to do cool. it yeah that sounds amazing you never need in- to go shopping again Right, exactly. And, you know, I think like growing your own food should be taught in schools, you know, from an early age, like that's a school, like a skill that like, people should learn and going back to like, you know, if everyone was like doing what they truly wanted to do, like their skill or their passion or whatever, and we went back to like, a trading system, you know, like or a bartering system where, you know, I don't know about like housing, you know, how we would be able to fix that. But if we all like lived relatively like simply, you know, just with what we need for how many family members you have. And then, you know, housing is relatively affordable. I feel like it would create a definitely just more balanced society in general. Yeah, the housing problem, um, there, there is no solution to it um, because the, the, the more humans, the more you depend on humans to build a house, the more dumb we get and don't know how to build things. And so you yeah. therefore go to big companies to build for you. And um, th- there is no solution. I mean, you could say the solution is like a coronavirus that comes along and wipes, you know, a nice generation of people out. So it sort of resets again. Sadly, that mm-hmm. is the only way, because if you look at nature and how nature works, that's how it works. So that is right. how it's going to work for humans. If there's too many weeds in a flower bed, you know, it just all the nutrients get sucked up from other plants and then the weak ones die. That's just the way it is. Um, but I mean, the housing thing is, is it's an absolute joke. Like how many middlemen do you need to, to build a house? And then that's why the houses are like 400,000 for what, a two bed house in England. It's a joke. Mm-hmm. And it's like at the same size as a as as a fucking land rover you know not literally but mm-hmm. it's just it's a joke and you spend your whole life paying off this house that you're never in and and, and your whole life's gone and that to me right. is absolutely not acceptable it's so sad and you know what i honestly i feel like uh this coronavirus obviously was meant to happen because like mother nature needed to restore balance and who knows what will actually end up coming of this like what direction society in general will head in But I almost feel like that is a huge possibility of like um, this kind of being the catalyst to like a World War Three. And it's like a scary thought, but like eventually like shit just completely hitting the fan. And maybe a lot of it is more underground than like World War Two, for example. But history does have a way of repeating itself. And it could be a way to literally... Uh, like reset everything, resetting the economy, resetting everything, and eventually maybe going back to something more simple like a bartering system, for example. But, um, you know, I've actually had some like crazy dreams about this, where it's pretty like actually relative, like right now, but it's only, it's like more extreme. So like in the dream, it's after this like World War Three, basically, And like the human species in general, especially like westernized societies, they are basically like GMO themselves because literally everything is GMO. The world is completely depleted, like the earth is depleted. There are no like natural nutrients, basically, like food is being printed out, which is already a thing. And then half the human species, their consciousness has actually expanded and accelerated like rapidly to the point of like telepathy is like a main communication we figure out that we can get nutrients literally just from like being outside and being in the sun touching a tree like things like this but yeah it was like a pretty epic dream (laughs) absolutely true and um it's like as you said um wars have have wiped out loads of people the same as flus years ago like polio whatever the fuck it was back then like if you look at the charts i remember going on google and seeing how many people died from past flus like you know just polio whatever it was measles and shit like that millions i couldn't believe it i couldn't understand how millions could die from from something like that and now you see what's happening now it's like okay that makes sense but they didn't have planes and stuff years ago so if millions could wipe out just I don't know, man walking miles to pick up something and then spreading it to over there. Jesus Christ, yeah. many more are going to die because we can now fly and drive drive everywhere. And um, yeah. somebody once said to me I used to work with that the reason why this is so populated or overpopulated is because we haven't had any wars because we've got military, we've got policing everywhere, we've all got governments. And that was one way of balancing 
civilization so it's like well if you're not going to fucking kill yourself god's like i will so the virus yeah. comes <laughs> along and um just yeah i mean it's going to be crazy to see there's eight billion on the planet right now if you could say like you know two three million have died already by the end of it mm-hmm. do you reckon there could be at least a billion gone which is quite a lot in terms of how long it would take for a billion to come on the planet like good maybe 10 20 years but do you reckon a billion could be gone and is that enough to make everyone wake up and not taking shit for granted you know who knows at this point um I mean, I do think there is a virus. However, I do think a lot of numbers are made up. Um, I think a lot of it is scare tactics to keep people in fear and keep people um, in check. Um, I could be wrong, you know, that's just like what I intuitively feel and I don't push my opinion on others, but I do, I don't believe in like watching the news and all this because I do think a lot of those numbers are um, skewed or um, kind of just like, you know, say someone has the coronavirus, but they actually died from another reason, it could be categorized as a corona death, you know. Um, So who knows how many people are actually dying from this. Um, I do think that it is kind of safe to say that the human population in general is living in a state of fear and living in that sympathetic nervous system is weakening your immune system and thoughts like your thoughts attract everything it attracts your like experience and I genuinely believe like you can make yourself sick just from believing that you are going to be sick so I think um, the human species needs to focus more on like mental health um, holistic health in general of course but like mental health is huge and like learning how to trust your intuition and um, think for yourself rather than rely on people that you don't truly know. Yeah, it's it's actually far more, it's, is it complex or simple, right? For example, I remember when I used to walk and um, I had a bad hip and all I kept focusing on was my bad hip and it just kept hurting and I was like fuck I've got a problem let's go get up or whatever blah 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 and it just the more I focused on it the more I could feel that pain anyway I went to the doctors they gave me a scan they're like there's nothing wrong with your hip right anyway <laughs> when I learned the law of attraction and stopped focusing on it it disappeared right same thing I used to get pain in my bollock just random pain in my bollock and I'm like oh my god cancer tumor what the fuck I'm like fucking idiot <laughs> shut the hell up there's no cancer no tumor in a body at ease you twat you're basically a monk living off water in nature how the fuck can you get disease in you shut the fuck up and then <laughs> and then the pain just disappeared for like for for a long 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 time and then I suddenly thought about oh I haven't had a pain in my bollock for a long time I get a pain in my bollock so what that's saying is that your body reacts to fear Mm-hmm. Just like when you turn the light on, you expect light. It, it's it's like it can change just like that. So the fear can literally kill you over time if you don't yeah. change that mindset. And it's the, the pain in my bollock is a fine example. I can turn it on just like that. I used to get pains in my chest, right? And I'm thinking, oh, heart attack, you know, heart disease. <sighs> Go to the doctor. Have you got pain in your chest? Yes. It's like, oh, well, it's just uh, maybe you're sleeping on your chest rather than your back because man's not supposed to sleep on his chest type of thing, right? Anyway, so no pains in my chest for ages. I'm eating McDonald's, right? I'm breathing in and I have pain. And I'm thinking to myself, this is not a heart attack because how the fuck can you get a heart attack within two seconds of munching on a burger? So it's my brain telling myself that, you know, there could be a problem, which is creating a problem because no one has, no one's arteries can get blocked while you're eating a burger it's a long period of time it just shows the power of the brain can stimulate other parts of the body and nervous system and mechanical parts Mm -hmm. and shit like that that makes your body respond to what you're thinking it's just crazy incredible and i think we're very quick to make the worst assumption like the second you start feeling pain in your chest you're like oh no something must be wrong when like all you have to do is just kind of like rub your chest do some self massage with some like argon oil you know it's just like cuz the the body is constantly regulating itself it's constantly adapting yeah it's going to have like some weird some weird symptom will show itself it's not the end of the world like and we i think we instinctively know what to do in order to help ourselves but we are told to not you know we're told to like oh no you need to go see a doctor right away you know because they're gonna know 
they don't know what's happening inside your body. You can say chest pain and that can mean a billion different things to them. They can tell you whatever they want, whatever they want. You know, if they want you to have a medication, they will give you a medication. They will tell you that you need that medication and you're going to believe them because they're a doctor. You know, that's just where our society is. I always think if a, if a cow or a lion or a zebra was just, you know, walking along the day and he, he hit his toe on a rock when he was running or, you know, or had a pain, he, he doesn't know what pain is. It's just part of life to feel this throbbing in his chest if he's conscious enough to realise that there's a throb or his toes bleeding. He doesn't know what blood is. He doesn't know that's called a toe. He's just getting on with his life and then they just get on with the life and then they die when they die. Get humans it's like oh my god bleeding oh pain fuck I've got I'm gonna die I've got cancer or something and then yeah. <laughs> and then you go down that path of I've got a problem and I can't find anything well I have doc because I can feel it and see it and then eventually long enough that actually becomes a real thing and you know as you said he's prescribing medication for a headache which was just because your brother punched you in the head but because you've been thinking it's more you've got bloody tumor in your head now so literally all these symptoms like feeling sick a headache can be millions of other things but mm-hmm. yet the thing you're exactly focusing on will manifest because you're right. expecting the doctor to say you are absolutely right thank god you came here i'm so glad you trusted your instincts you've got cancer mm-hmm. you're gonna die oh oh fuck wish i had cancer anymore <laughs> you know <what> i mean <laughs> <laughs> No, it's so true. Yeah. And, you know, I think that hopefully with this whole coronavirus thing, more people are beginning to awaken to like the need of just like changing your lifestyle and focusing on just balance in general. You know, there's no need to be so extreme to one end, like back to what we were saying early, earlier, you know, you don't have to like go, you know, complete carbs out of your, you know, cut carbs out of your diet completely one complete end, you know, it's just, yeah, do what like feels good for you. But, you know, it's always coming back to balance, you know, because this is what like nature wants is just balance. And we are like, intrinsically connected to nature so I think as soon as we can find balance within ourselves that's when like the earth can actually heal itself and things like pandemics will stop happening yeah yes 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 right um think of a question a completely random question a completely random ask me that question what is the most embarrassing moment of your life um I, I'd have to I'd have to completely go into my brain and think because there's nothing that comes up on the moment like now um I, I honestly wouldn't know there's probably loads but just, yeah <laughs> there's because the thing I don't I don't get embarrassed because part of me doing me is about showing that no matter what you do go through you're just a human and it doesn't matter and no one cares so there's no such thing as embarrassing because if you like stand there and have people taking the piss out of you and you can handle it and don't mind it people will see that and they'll be like wow they're just taking the piss out of him right there and he's not doing anything that's admirable um and it gets me and for example used to tolerating negative energy people speaking about you which is going to be there for the rest of your life whether you are famous or not famous whether you work for a small office and they go for a coffee and they're bitching about more reading accounts that's just part of life and mm-hmm. so many people take negative energy personally and they can't handle it and um, it can destroy your your mind and life when you can't handle negative energy so not being embarrassed about anything is powerful because once you like have exposed to the world all of your weaknesses you don't have anything that people can hold against you so there's nothing embarrassing because you've like shown your big fungus toenail and you've shown that big <laughs> wart on your you know your, your bollocks so it, there's no there's no there's power you need in, um... to be embarrassed there's power in just allowing your like true authentic self to shine forward and not giving a crap what people think too and i think um people respect that with like, however you're like, say you're dealing with a, an embarrassing like moment, like per se, you know, but if you're just like owning it and you're just kind of laughing it off and smiling and just not really, you know, letting it take a hold of you, I think people will actually see that and they'll be able to like connect with that. And it'll, 
be like more inspiring more than anything. It's almost like Jesus when he died on the cross. He was like making the point that um, there's going to be people in life that don't understand. They think they're right and you know you're right, but there's no way to tell them that they're wrong. And so you just got to take it. So, you know, put me on the cross. I forgive them because they don't understand. It's the same type of thing. Like you're showing that you put yourself in a vulnerable position and that it's okay to for, to be bombarded with with people attacking you. And there's a program called Embarrassing Bodies on English TV, which is basically a doctor's surgery. And you've got people turning up with all sorts of everything. Like, like literally, why the fuck would they go on TV with that? You know, whatever, <laughs> you know, a nipple with two, a, a pair of boobs with four nipples. Like, why would you do that? And, and so the answer is probably for them that they're getting paid, of course, but they don't care because th there's billions of human beings They've all got problems underneath the clothes, but no one shows because of their, they don't want to be embarrassed. So it's not, well, why are they doing that? There's millions with problems. And I went on a program called Naked Attraction in the UK, right? It's a dating show where they judge you based on being naked, right? And so people were like, <laughs> how could you be on TV naked? How could you be in front of all those producers naked? I'm like, well, it's no different to my arm. It does, in my mindset, my, you know what, is no different to my arm or my leg or my <laughs> hair or my ear. I don't comprehend that as that's a cock, that should be embarrassing, that's private. It's like, it's all just part of the same thing. Like if you look at a dog, he's not like covering his bollocks up. It's just, he's licking him right in front of you, literally. So he doesn't care, he doesn't know. So it's about me making a point that this is just the same thing, whether I've got my clothes on in front of those producers, millions have seen me on TV doesn't matter why would I care what millions see who I'm never going to see I don't even know saw me everyone's insecure about their own size my mind's not very big so I'm, 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 I'm to put it out there like the more we, <laughs> the more vulnerable you are do the exact stream so that's the only time I believe right. in doing the you know the extreme if you want to overcome say some uh, vulnerability or insecurity which you had say at school you know do the opposite expose it because now mm -hmm. it's like well now if I'm in the changing room with one guy does it matter he sees me? No, because the whole fucking world see me. Like, it'd probably be a Netflix <laughs> at some point. And I'm not even kidding, right? Totally. And, you know, <laughs> I think that we easily get in these mindsets of, like, I'm the only person that is, like, having this problem. I'm the only person that is insecure and everyone else has it all figured out. They're all perfect. You know, it's like we forget that we all experience the same spectrum of emotions, you know, and similar experiences as well that we become so like isolated within ourselves. And I think that's why people really do struggle so much with like self-esteem and self-confidence because we, we kind of take it so personal, you know, we take it very personal that like, oh, I'm so self-conscious about my body and everyone else is looking so good and they feel great about themselves. But when we really come out with it and we just express like, hey, like I actually am not feeling so good about this. And we realize, okay, well, neither does anyone else, you know, like, or we all have something that we're insecure about. And it's learning how to just accept that about yourself. Like, because I think a lot of people like, you know, self-confidence, it's a journey. It's not something that you can just be like, you know, maybe one day, okay, I'm confident and you stay that way for quite a while. And then you eventually go back in your old ways or whatever, you know, everyone is different, but usually it is like kind of a process, like every single day, learning how to accept the things that you don't like love about yourself, but just accepting that part of yourself, you know, that inner voice that is very self-critical and judging yourself or judging others, learning how to accept that voice and just like realize that is there and just having that awareness of like okay right now I am thinking a negative thought about myself and saying to yourself okay hey I love you for that but like let's switch it to gratitude or switch it to something else because that thought is not helping you you know if anything it's isolating you more it's preventing you from getting what you want it's preventing it's just holding you back so like what do you want you need to go after what you want and in order to do that you have to get rid of these these thoughts that are actually holding you back so what came to my mind when you were saying that is um, you know like you got two double a batteries right uh, uh positive has to connect with the negative on the other side right so in in our brain uh you've got the two batteries next to each other and they are providing a, a circuit. So you, if you turned one around, then it wouldn't work. And if you just had one, then it won't work because you need to, to uh, 
create a circuit. So in our mind, the negative thoughts are negative sounds, vibrations. In between those are positive sound, positive vibrations. So it's like negative, positive, mm-hmm. negative, positive, right? And um, the, so the, 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 the negative thoughts are always going to be there amongst the positive thoughts if you have those two negative and positive batteries constantly creating a current. So how do you stop the negative thoughts? Turn the batteries around. So what does that mean? Uh, basically means just stop processing negative thoughts and they'll just die out like eventually you know they'll just die out because you're not giving them any attention like don't water the flowers they'll just die and then you're left with all the other flowers over there which kind of are on a different vibration like a different nutrients like positive vibration and the negative ones that are living off say soil as opposed to compost they'll die out so now you're just left with like just all these batteries positive batteries that have no current because the other negative charge isn't there i think i've explained this wrong but you get the point (laughs) so and so now it's just like loads of positive batteries that are there but they're not charged because there's no uh, other negative um circuit to you know current it round and um, and therefore there's no negative no negative thoughts Mm mm-hmm yeah, I mean, if only that could be so mo- like easily applicable, but I understand what you're saying. But I think um, a big part of it is also just realizing that there's always that contrast of dark and light. And, you know, there's some quote, I don't even know what it is, but it's like, you know, the deeper you go within your darkness is like the the more you can shine your bright light, you know, or like the happier you can be if you've experienced like extreme sorrow because you know that contrast you know and that's anything in life you know it's like in order to have that light and the happiness you wouldn't even know that it's happiness if you haven't experienced the other end of the spectrum right absolutely like my dad always used to say um you wouldn't know what positive is if you didn't know negative it's like well that you'd just be neutral they'd just be just going about your day doing what you're doing and you wouldn't know what anxiety is because you you know just know anxiety is you need to have experienced non-anxiety which is just right. that happy feeling without feeling sick so mm-hmm. so but then it's like well why do I need to feel anxiety well, like there's a reason why I feel anxiety because that's just a feeling and then um, that could be we're complicated because then it's like that's yeah. a man-made thing that's put us in that box to feel anxious when really we're just like a caged animal will feel anxious walking around that cage that's anxiety created by man but do animals have anxiety maybe if there's a they feel like a lion's you know creeping up on them but that won't be anxiety that'd be adrenaline because they're like the lion's not going to sit there for a few days just looking at him he's either going to pounce and eat him or you know the gazelle's going to run away which means that the feeling of anxiety is completely man-made and therefore everyone should be feeling this freedom which is just thinking and doing and then there's mm-hmm. no thoughts building up because I've got to go to the post office because there's no post office in the, you know, the animal kingdom. It's not, fuck, I got to pick the kids up from school. What, did I turn the gas off? Or there's no gas, you know. <laughs> there's no kids going to school in the animal kingdom. So all this f- shit in man's head is literally man-made. Yeah. And, um, and yeah. I think a lot of it is environmental too. Like we don't realize like the toxins around us in our food, in our water, in our air, like literally in everything, this can have effect on your physical body and therefore like a, a, you know, a ripple effect on your emotions and your thoughts. And a lot of it quite literally is like man-made and like even anxiety, like, well, why are we living in a state of anxiety? You know, it's like you have all these responsibilities or all these things that you're supposed to accomplish, whether it's your job or your school and you're putting this work on yourself and you're afraid of failure. Well, once you take away that fear of failure, it's just like, all right, well, I'm going to try. And like, if I do well, then great. If I don't, oh, well, but um, I genuinely do believe that like people can really like find their talents or even like their callings in life through times of darkness or times of feeling extremely anxious or insecure about whatever it is like when you really dive deep within that darkness and why it's even there and what it's trying to teach you about life about yourself this can really lead you to well I'm supposed to be doing this and this is the light that I can share that I've discovered through going through that darkness yeah I find that when people have had darkness that if they don't kill themselves they end up doing the complete opposite and being really strong because like the deeper you go the more the longer you have to dig yourself out but people who 
don't have that much darkness, but they have some darkness, but it's only a little bit. That's why they stay in that pattern forever because they've not got that that difference of really fucking dark, really light. It's just all the same to them. So it's hard to mm-hmm. really get that contrast of feeling anxious versus feeling happy because they've never felt really happy. They've never felt really anxious. They just always feel anxious and they're a little bit happy and they're anxious. So it's like you need that difference to realize, okay, well, what's the point in having this pink car if my last car was purple because it's similar. You're like, you need to have blue and then realize, oh, that's a nice green right. car to realize, well, that's that's a lot of difference. So again, I, I don't think that these problems can, can be solved. I do believe that it's a next generation thing. Like you can't, it's almost like, how do you completely heal a heroin addict after 30 years whose body is basically heroin wanting more of the same thing that in order to flood it out you'd need like 30 years of constant one-to-one like mentorship that like even like bacteria and mushrooms it just needs that tiny bit of mushroom to fucking grow mushrooms all over the place like there's just certain things that once it takes off it's very hard Mm -hmm. to stop if you look at nature like fucking oak trees is there's acorns everywhere you dig up that oak tree there's another one it's like just imagine a heroin addict you can give him the yoga mats, give him life, give him love, give him sex, give him money. But his body's like, I need that feeling that we once had. And it's so yeah. hard. And the only way out is essentially, as so you know, to wipe out the generation who are fucked, which is our generation. And then the new mm-hmm. generation sort of just a reset, you know, because we were following the same patterns of our parents. Um, honestly, that is the only way I see it is changing is that there's like no image of what it should be from our parents and it's reset and we start mm-hmm. again which could be the trade days. And think about it, Bitcoin, right? And tri- cryptocurrency. There's so many coins out there that you can trade with anyone with any coin. It could be Bitcoin. It could be any other coins. So that's the local trading. But rather than carrot for a bar of chocolate by, by sir, it's going to be a bit of Bitcoin for, an, for a Wagamama's, uh, for a uh, KFC or uh, a McDonald's for a, a Ethereum coin. That is what's happening, but it's online now. So it's happening. This local trade, rather than cash and going to the bank, you literally can go online, download a virtual wallet, and send any coin that you want at for literally anything an Xbox, PlayStation, a laptop. So yeah, it's happening, but just not the same way as it used to. It's invisible. Right, totally. And you know, um, this made me remember our last conversation. We were talking about like when we um, purposefully heal ourselves, like do the inner work to do what we need to do to heal ourselves. This can like heal the generations that came before us. And I definitely feel like this is a thing. Cause the more I've like, just kind of come to my own truths, the more I've seen this kind of trickle down in my family, you know, not that everything is like fine and dandy all the time, you know, of course, but I think um, with the next generation that's coming, I think like people are becoming just more awoke in general. And this in turn will kind of like have a healing effect of like all the past generations. And hopefully that has some type of like energetic effect on, you know, the earth and society and mankind in general. It's like, we kind of have to start rewriting the story of humankind. And it kind of comes back to like, you know, Jesus and Gandhi and all these like spiritual leaders when they were really just like preaching the same thing in their preaching, you know, I'm the son of God, but so are you. And I think that's where people need to wake up is like, we all have that divinity within us. You know, we can all preach the concept of love and all of these things. And religion is great. I'm not putting it down for some people. It's like, it works for them. And just finding, you know, what works for you, but realizing that like, you know, God or your, the higher entity power, whatever it is, it's not necessarily something that has to be so foreign and so separate from us. I think when we say, um, you know, it's, it's going to reset for the next generation, it's like we're talking about a problem that has occurred for thousands of years, literally it's it's only the generation before. In fact, it's not even their generation. It's our generation. When I say generation, I mean people born in from like 1990, even like 2000, right? It's the generation from 2000 because our grandparents, their grandparents, parents, 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 life was fine. It's our, as in you and me, our generation that is fucked. 
So when we say fix it, it's only got like fixed one generation. So it just shows like how problematic it is. Do you know what I'm trying to say? It's not like a thing that man has to evolve over time. Like they've got to learn to light a fire, you know, and um, learn how to make a gas stove. Because that was like, mm-hmm. that was done last, you know, literally the generation before. It's like the problems that we are facing has come from our generation. But if we don't fix it, it will roll over to the next generation. At the same time, if we do fix it, then we reset back to our grandparents or even our parents' days. So it's literally a small fuck up, which if it isn't done correctly, will roll over. And I, I, I don't, I don't want to know what would happen. I think we'll be dead by the time our children's generation end up getting to our age and realizing this because yeah i don't think it's our problem (laughs) but it just shows you that if the shit that people like us have had to go through in our years generation school whatever only imagine what the next generation of kids have to go through that if we don't teach them this new spiritual way of what life used to be for our grandparents Mm -hmm. it's fucked so i don't think many people speak to speak about what their grandparents had like my parents like they had no um no no hot water no, no heating they had a fire right their shower head wasn't a power shower it was probably a shitty bath shower that you attach a shower to on the bath and so like i'm thinking how the hell would you wash your hair with this drip like so when you wake up <laughs> and it's freezing cold like when they take a shit it was outside the toilet was outside i'm like oh my god who can shit in the cold right and the fire once it goes off at night time You just have to wrap up and it's not taught to people our age what it was like, even like 50 years ago. Like we've come so far in 50 years that 50 years ago, my parents, for example, had a a wood fire. There wasn't central heating. And that's crazy to to imagine. Like, I can't even imagine. And, you know, like they didn't have. It's crazy how problems have evolved. Yeah, they just had pasta and rice and, you know, but all this luxury food we have, like noodles and like spicy noodles and Asian noodles and like didn't even exist. <laughs> right. And yet, yeah. And yet all, pro- all our problems are with all the problems we have at the time when life is supposed to be the best. And I mean, right, exactly. Yeah. Like all this technology is supposed to be like solving our problems and making our lives easier. And to, of course, like it is to like a certain extent, you know, but it's crazy how our problems have evolved like over in such a short amount of time, you know, just how rapidly humanity has grown within the last 40 years. You know, that's literally nothing. Like 40 years is nothing. You know, that's like half a lifetime. But all of the technology that we've gotten and a lot of it is probably not even out yet. Like there is technology that we don't even know about. So like even 40 years from now, like where are we going to be? Like how, like, (laughs) you know what I mean? In what way are we going to be like, how heavily will we be relying on like technology and all of this? And to what extent will people be thinking for themselves like are we going to spiritually expand or are we going to get to a point where it's like we have no choice because we all have like microchips in us or something like this you know no if you don't use the brain it dies we're going to go back to chimps being on our phones we are our back kind of arches yeah. and then we're just dumb chimps everyone's corporations series doing everything for us we're going to be brain dead and we're not going to be able to think for ourselves but in terms of the technology you know like holograms so for example i'm doing a podcast with you you'll have a machine that will scan your body get your holocaust holocaust fucking hell hologram <laughs> image right where i will then be imagine like a tanning booth like a sunbed tanning booth where it's just like completely rounded. So I'll be standing in like this kind of rounded thing. It'll be digital. So I'll be looking straight through, I don't know, a screen, but it will be like you're standing there. You know, these 3D cameras where you look around. So Mm -hmm. rather than me looking at a screen of it 3D, I'll be in a kind of, uh, like a, like a, a 3d model yeah, a right. wardrobe let's just say and you'll have a mm-hmm. wardrobe and it scanned you you're in it so i can see all different sides of you, your head your back your face whatever and and it's like you're there in front of me mm-hmm. um but it's just like light shining up that shows me you and your frequencies and it will be quite amazing because yeah it would be quite amazing um and that, that's how it will be. And it's like, I'm in, I'm there with you, but I'm not. It's like, you can sit on a couch next to your friend who's not there, 
because you've got like mm-hmm. a, um AI AI masks on so you look to the left your friend's there who's who's actually not there but it actually feels like she is and you take your mask off and it's just your dog like what the fuck is going on yeah <laughs> who are you talking to <laughs> but yeah that that's how it will go and that that is quite exciting if you have the spiritual balance you know of course but right. um yeah what's the time by the way oh i don't know i haven't checked what have you got to go or oh it's been about an hour have you got to go or do you want to wrap it up or what um i probably should get going i do have some things i gotta get done today okay uh, uh, would anything you want to promote before we go Well, I just started a YouTube channel. Um, It'll be like yoga, health tips, lifestyle, things like this. And it's called Promise Holistic Health. Promise Holistic Health. Instagram, do you want to say your Instagram? Yeah, my Instagram name is the same, Promise Holistic Health. So please find me on those platforms and subscribe because my YouTube channel is lonely right now. I literally just started it. (laughs) Okay, wait, I'm just going to press stop. Hang on. Howdy. Thanks for listening to my episode. Uh, if you could remember to rate and review the episode after you've listened, that'd be fantastic. And also subscribe so when I release a new one, you get a notification. And also, please tell your friends on socials about me podcast. Now I'm going for a poo. I'll be back later. Have a great day and speak to you soon.